Hi, and welcome to the Blue Valley North Library and Media Center website. Today we're going to talk about recording and editing with Audacity. The first thing that you're going to do is go to the Start menu, go to All Programs, and choose Audacity. Audacity will already be installed on your school computers. You'll click OK to get past the Help menu, and Audacity looks like this. All of your controls are up here in the top left. The blue quote is for pause, the green triangle for play, the yellow square for stop, skip to the beginning, skip to the end, and the red circle, of course, is record. Whenever you start recording, you just click on record and you'll notice your sound waves start appearing as your track records. When you press stop, it'll stop the recording, and if you want to start again, you'll have to click where you are in time and then start recording, and you'll notice that it records on a new track. If you d really don't like something that you've recorded, you can just click the red X, or the, sorry, the X in the top left corner, and that will just delete the entire track. We'll start recording again just to have something to work with, and you'll notice that if you were to just pause your recording, all of your effects and your ability to do more is grayed out. So if I needed to do anything special, like using a special effect to fade in or fade out or to make it louder or anything like that, you'll notice they're all grayed out. As soon as you stop the recording, your effects return. So make sure if you're not able to do anything that you're not paused. That's the number one mistake that most people make. If you needed to slide your audio over so that you could add some intro music or outro music or if you needed to put something at the beginning that you forgot, you can use this time shift tool. And when you click on it, you'll notice it lets you click and move your tracks. So you'll want to move them so they were the way they were when you left off. That would allow you to put some intro music at the beginning um, or maybe slide some tracks together if you had to add something in that you forgot. You can switch back to the selection tool and then what we'll do now is we'll try to import some music. In general it's a good idea to use intro or outro music to begin your audio. It is not a good idea to have the music playing the entire time that you are talking. People usually find it distracting and many times the volume for that track is way too loud and it makes it difficult to hear your voice. So in order to import music we're going to go to File, Import, and we're going to import audio. I'm going to browse to where I have my track saved. You can only import MP3. You cannot import other um, file formats. So I'm going to choose this MP3 that I have in my folder and you'll notice that it puts it in a new track down at the beginning. Now obviously this is way too mu much music for the track that I have. I would say maybe your intro music is five to seven seconds and your outro music is five to seven seconds. This is obviously way more than we need. So I'm going to go ahead and use the beginning of it and then I'm going to use the end of it. So I'm going to cut all of this out by highlighting it and then clicking on the scissors. And that's an easy thing to do whenever you need to cut anything out of your tracks. Then what I'm going to do to split this so that it's intro music and outro music is I'm going to go to Edit, Clip Boundaries, and I'm going to choose Split. And that's going to split right where I had my cursor. So now if I move back to that Time Shift tool, I can slide this to the end of my track. The last edit that I'm going to make is to switch back to the selection tool and I'm going to highlight the end of my intro music and I'm going to go ahead and make that fade out so the music will fade out into my voice. There's the, part, the second part with my voice and then there will be my outro music. Now my outro music is almost 10 seconds long if you look at this right here. So that's a little bit long. I'm going to go ahead and trim it down. I'm going to go all the way to here and it naturally fades out because it's the end of the song so I'll just cut that piece and I've made my outro a little bit shorter. If I'm not done yet and I need to continue working what I'll do is go to File, Save Project As and it tells you that you are saving an Audacity project which means you can only open this project on a computer that has Audacity. So I'm going to click OK I'm going to set it where I want. I'm going to name it my first name, my last name, and my hour. And you'll save it into your folder. I just saved mine to the desktop. And now this is ready, so if I open it, I can just go to my desktop, or if I close it, I'm sorry, I can go to my desktop, I can find the file, I can open it again, and it does open in Audacity.
If I'm completely done with my project, what I'm going to do is choose File, Export, and I'm going to choose to export my project as an MP3. You'll notice that this automatically defaults to a WAV. I'm not really happy with that, so I'm going to make it an MP3. It's just a little more universal. So in the Save As Type, I'm going to change it to MP3. It's named my first name, last name, and my hour and I'm going to click Save. And it does tell me your tracks will be mixed down to two stereo channels. So all of these will become stereo instead of being on three separate tracks. So I'll click OK. This is the information that you would put if it was going to show up on your uh, MP3 player or whatever device you use, your iPod. Since we don't really care about that, we're not playing these on an iPod, I'm just going to click OK and ignore it. So then it exported my file and here it is. You'll notice the difference. The MP3 format is what you turn in. The Audacity project just stays in your folder in case you need to edit it later. And you'll notice when you open that MP3, it opens in a non-editable format. So that's what you turn in. If you have any questions, please contact us. Ms. Sneathan or I can both be emailed through the library website. And we hope you have a great time recording with Audacity. Thanks for watching.